sir. Thank you all very much for having me speak today. I want to quickly acknowledge my folks right over there. Drove down from Minnesota. My dad, proud member of the CWA for many years. My mom was a part of the hospitality union. And yesterday celebrated 48 years of being married. <laughs> The folks came down from Minnesota, it's true. I was not born in Iowa, I was born in Minnesota. And uh, like other folks, like uh, Tom Vilsack, who was born in Pennsylvania, or uh, former gubernatorial candidate Jack Hatch, who was born in Connecticut, I learned about Iowa a little later in life. And uh, the phrase that I keep coming back to is that uh, love brings people to Iowa. You might know what I'm talking about. Uh, two people maybe meet at college, and one of them is from Iowa. They come to meet the family and uh, they start talking about a family and poof, all of a sudden they're looking at houses. Uh, one other person I want to point out today, uh, she's actually uh, holding a phone right now. That is my wife Dana, was raised in Decorah. We met in California, but uh, six months after I met her, we got married on our front porch right here in Des Moines. So on the count of three, everybody say, hi Dana. One, two, three, hi Dana. <laughs> So let's talk about some politics. I, I wore these colors today uh, specifically, gray and blue, uh, not necessarily for Democrat and Republican, but to tell a story. I was just at the Centrist Project Independent Summit in Philadelphia, and Governor Bill Walker is the only independent governor in our nation. They sat him right next to me. There was 40 of us in a room. I was only one of two candidates invited to attend this. Governor Walker told us a story. He said, uh, the Civil War, the story goes that one of the soldiers wanted to go visit his family. He was close to the house where he grew up in. So he had to walk through the battlefield to go visit his family. So he said, well, I've got it figured out. I'll wear a blue union coat on top and I'll wear a gray Confederate pants on the bottom so I'll be able to walk right through the battlefield. Well, he got out there and both sides started shooting at him. Welcome to independent politics in America. <laughs> so uh, I am running as an independent candidate. So what does that mean? Uh, it can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different candidates. Here's what it means for mine. At the Centrist Project, we talked a lot about process over policy. See, I believe that right now government doesn't work as well as it should. I've never been a part of an organization that had to infight. If you, if you went into a bank and half the tellers were on one team and half the tellers were on the other team, and this team's first job was to make the other side lose and their second job was to make their team win and their third job was to manage their money, well, you'd probably take your business elsewhere. That's why I'm running as an independent, because I think the quickest and surest way to improve American democracy and to improve the legislative process is to re-examine the role of the executive branch and put independence in that office. Uh, so I just got the call here. My three minutes uh, intro is up, so some questions. Sure, welcome, Brett. Thank you, thank you very much. So, do you support the changes to, that the legislature made to the collective bargaining law this year? And if not, what would you do to overturn or lessen the damage of it to workers and their organizations? I was, I was raised in a proud uh, union household growing up. The movie that we brought here was a union film. We need more unions, not less. We need more workers' rights, not less. I would definitely reinstitute Chapter 20. It's a shame that it was passed under a Republican governor, uh, Governor Bob Ray, and uh, that the Republican legislature took it away. So we've got to get, get it back as soon as possible. And I also think uh, it's been a stark reminder for folks who aren't yet in a union uh, that they should be. A lot of the jobs in Iowa, there's a lot of jobs and our unemployment levels are down right now, but a lot of them are $9, $10 an hour and don't provide some of the protections that unions do. So I think we need more unions, not less. Second question is, what's your vision for education in Iowa from kindergarten through college, and what changes need to be made so that Iowa does not fall further behind? It's, it's interesting. Um, I spent a lot of my career, I was 10 years at NBC. I was a creative director for the NBC Stations Group, and when I said I grew up in, in the Midwest and was heading back to Iowa to start a, a new life, really, a lot of folks said, oh, the education there is so good. The schools are so good there. But as we know, they need a lot of help and the funding keeps getting hit. Um, a statistic that I come back to a lot is University of Iowa and Iowa State did a poll of their graduating class and less than half of them plan on sticking around. And I think this is part of the issue. 
one of, the, one of the reasons they say that is because they don't feel they can get a full life here in Iowa. I know differently. It's why I'm, I proudly moved here. But I think once we can uh, retain the folks, instead of just having them get a degree and then take off, will be one of the steps in, it, in improving not only Iowa, but also our education program. We need more funding. Uh, and um, yeah, so it has to be done. All right, Brent, your third question is what is your vision for Iowa's economy and its future? And what changes need to be made to make that happen with yourself as governor? So the news out today, I think, is, is very interesting. Um, Apple's CEO, Tim Cook, was here today. He spoke at noon in front of the Capitol. And they are going to open a brand new data center. Facebook, Google, and Microsoft have already done that. Doesn't bring a lot of jobs, but what it does is bring real tech here and it starts to put a, a, a footprint here in the state. I, I don't think many of us in the room here were excited about the fertilizer plant in Weaver, Iowa and the tax incentive financing that was used to, to pay for it. The Apple plant that they're about to build on 2,000 acres in Waukee uses similar funding. But I do think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, the top two businesses, top two industries in Iowa are agriculture and manufacturing for agriculture. So we can never turn our back on the Iowa farmer uh, to keep revenues coming in. But we have to start looking at new sectors like the Apple data center, uh, I think is a real smart step for the state. It's about investing in the future. We've got to turn Iowa into a magnet, not only to retain our young people, but to get new businesses and to get new entrepreneurs. So I was heartened by the news today. They do use tax incentive financing uh, for a lot of it, um, but it will eventually increase the tax tables. And, and uh, so I think it's a solid step. All right, thank you for your answers. You have uh, three minutes for closing. So in closing, I want to point out a statistic uh, that you might not know about. Up until the 1930s, did you know that uh, Iowa had 11 seats in the United States House of Representatives? We had 11 seats. Right now we have four. King, Blum, Loeb, Sack, and Young. Um, the shame about that, losing seven seats over less than 100 years, the way, the way it's worked out, so the Constitution says that they divide the 435 seats in the House of Representatives equally among populations. If the human beings want to live in your state, you get representation. The fact that we've lost seven since the 1930s to me says that Iowa is losing identity. We're losing our place at the table, not only in the national conversation, but in, a, in young people when they start talking about where do they want to live, where do they want to spend their hard-earned money and create a career. So. If I am elected governor, I will be the biggest cheerleader for this state. Uh, the fact that I did come here later in life goes to show that I learned about Iowa, I fell in love with it, and uh, again, love brings people to Iowa, and my love for this state has inspired me to run for governor. Um, I encourage all of you to think about an independent candidate. Uh, I voted mostly Democrat in the last elections around here, but if you look at some of the key races, sadly, good Democrat candidates aren't getting there. So if you're looking at for another way to get Democrat ideals into the state house or independent ideas and certainly a couple Republican ideas, because as Governor Walker said, one party does not have a monopoly on good ideas. I, uh, I encourage you to look at my candidacy. You can learn more at RoskyForIowa.com. And again, thank you very much for letting me speak here today.